I recognize the member for Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you, Speaker. And I really want to thank the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore for bringing this really important motion forward. And I will be supporting it. Like many areas of this province, my community, Peel, has seen an increase in gun violence over the past several years. In 2014, there were 30 shootings occurrences with 107 bullets fired and 15 persons injured. 2018, 419 bullets were fired with 45 people injured and 10 killed. But last year, Speaker, 669 bullets were fired with 54 injured and 12 losing their life. We know this trend is continuing. Just yesterday, a 28-year-old in Brampton was shot and killed. The investigation is ongoing, but police believe he was shot through the front door of his parents' home. These are not just statistics. These are real people, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, lost to senseless acts of violence. The province knows this is an issue, and our government has taken action to address this. Among them, in August of 2018, we announced a $25 million investment to crack down on bail offenders and equip police with the tools they need to protect our communities. In March of 2019, we launched a plan to combat guns and gangs by investing in initiatives that support local crime prevention, enforcement, and prosecution. In January, I was pleased to welcome the Solicitor General to my riding of Mississauga Streetsville to announce Peel's $20.5 million share of Ontario's $195 million commitment province-wide through the then-new Community Safety Policing Grant Program. This program provides police services with the necessary tools and resources to enable deployment of frontline officers where and when they need them the most as well as to support police services as they implement public safety and community policing initiatives that focus on local or provincial priorities. But the province cannot solve the entire issue on its own. What we see too often is the penalties for these actions are not strong enough. People who commit violent crimes should not be able to get out on bail and have the opportunity to commit these crimes again. What comes to mind for me, and as members on both sides have mentioned, is the tragedy in late July that occurred in Brampton. A 27-year-old woman was murdered by her ex-spouse. He was out on bail following gun-related charges, not for the first time, the second, the third, or even the fourth time. This was his fifth, and this should never have happened. There should be no way that this can happen. And to quote um, the Chief of uh, Peel Regional Police, Chief Nishandarayapa, our communities are continuing to suffer the consequences of violent crime committed with illegal firearms. It is the outcome of an equation which includes interim release of dangerous offenders with a demonstrated history of violence combined with illegal firearms possession and use. This is a dangerous trend which inhibits our ability to mitigate community risk and prevent the tragic results we are seeing far too often." End quote. And I agree. As legislators, we must draw attention to these failures and fix them. This motion today brings attention to this issue and shows that our legislature is committed to seeing it fixed. But there is only so much within our jurisdiction. That's why we're calling on the federal government to continue working with us on this issue, to crack down on violent gun crimes and those who traffic weapons, to strengthen bail provisions for these reckless, dangerous offenses, to explore mandatory minimum sentences for traffickers, and to keep Ontarians and Canadians safe. Once again, I thank the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore for bringing this legislation forward. I support it, and I encourage all members of the House to also support it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you.